Dear Heavenly Father, as the morning sun rises, I am filled with awe at the beauty of your creation and the gift of a new day. Lord, I come before you with a heart overflowing with gratitude for your boundless love and endless grace. As I welcome the dawn, I invite your presence to fill me, guiding my thoughts, words and actions today. Father, your faithfulness carries me and your mercy wraps around me like a warm embrace. As I set out on this day's journey, I ask for your wisdom to understand your will and the strength to follow it. Grant me courage to face whatever challenges may come, knowing you are my rock and my fortress. In moments of uncertainty, be my steady anchor, and in times of doubt, be my guiding light. Help me to trust in your perfect plan and place my fears and worries in your loving hands. Leave a like for this video and share it at least one time to help us reach more people. Spread the gospel and change more lives comment using the word Amen. In the face of whatever you're dealing with today, God wants you to know that your help comes directly from Him, the Creator of heaven and earth. We're about to embark on a heartfelt prayer together, calling on God for divine protection and abundant blessings in the name of Jesus. Stay with us until the end, open your heart, and be ready to receive the uplifting power of this prayer. Lord, as I move through life's complexities, may your peace guard my heart, and may your joy be my strength. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, so that I can be a beacon of hope and love to those around me. Help me see others' needs with compassion, and share your grace with everyone I meet. Father, I lift up my loved ones to you asking for your protection, provision, and peace to surround them. Bless them with your presence, and let your hand of blessing rest upon their lives. Strengthen the bonds of our love and unity, so that our relationships reflect your unfailing love. As I step into this day, may your name be glorified in all that I do. Let my words and actions bring honor to you, and may your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Father, for the precious gift of this day and for your unending love that sustains me. Psalm 28 verse 7 said, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy and with my song I praise him. To you, Father, I give all the praise, honor and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In Ephesians 1 verse 13, the Bible shares an amazing truth that we all need to know and hold close to our hearts. It says, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. This means that when we hear the message of truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ, which tells us how he died on the cross for our sins and rose again, and when we believe in this message, we are marked with a seal. That seal is the Holy Spirit. It's incredible that God's Word reveals this. When you believe in Jesus Christ, God identifies you as his own by the mark of the Holy Spirit on your life. For anyone who struggles with their identity, know this. Your true identity is in Jesus Christ. He has branded you, marked you, and sealed you with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sets believers apart, making them known as God's children. This is why the Bible tells us that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So what changes when the Holy Spirit comes into your life? How can you tell if He is there? First, the Holy Spirit is our helper. John 16 verse 7 says, But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. When you feel weak or overwhelmed, the Holy Spirit is there to support you. When you're too tired or weary to pray, he helps you. Life won't always be easy, and following Christ will have its challenges. But with the Holy Spirit, you have divine help. You have a source of strength from above. Another sign of the Holy Spirit's presence is how he moves you to follow God's will. 
The book of Acts holds a powerful example of this. In Acts 8 verse 26 to 31, we read about Philip, who was guided by an angel of the Lord to go down a desert road from Jerusalem to Gaza. There, he met an Ethiopian official who was reading the book of Isaiah. The Spirit told Philip to go up and walk beside the carriage. Philip obeyed, heard the man reading, and asked if he understood what he was reading. The man invited Philip to join him and explain it. The story continues in Acts 8 verse 35 to 39. Philip began with that very scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled, they came to some water and the man said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord took Philip away, and the official went on his way, rejoicing. The Holy Spirit led Philip to share the gospel with someone who was ready to be saved. We too should seek to be led by the Holy Spirit in our lives. He might lead you to pray for a loved one or a friend, even when they haven't told you they're struggling. The Holy Spirit knows what we cannot see guiding us to be a light in the lives of others and to share God's love whenever the opportunity arises. The Holy Spirit can lead you to reach out and give someone a word of encouragement just when they need it most, when they're in a dark and difficult place. This is why it's so important for us to be sensitive to His voice. Another sign that the Holy Spirit is at work in your life is found in Romans 15 verse 13, which says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This power brings us hope, even in a world full of discouragements and challenges that try to steal our joy. But with the Holy Spirit, there is always a source of hope that keeps us going. When the Holy Spirit enters your life, He will also convict you of sin. John 16 verse 7 to 8 says, It is for your good that I go away. Unless I go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of sin and righteousness and judgment. When the Holy Spirit is with you, the sins you once enjoyed will no longer feel satisfying. Instead, they will become heavy on your heart, because the Holy Spirit will remind you of the sacrifice Jesus made for you on the cross. He will move you to live a life that is pure and pleasing to God and urge you to turn away from any sin in your life. Let us pray, Father God. I lift up each person listening right now. I pray for every heart that is longing to know you more deeply. Lord, we ask you to pour out your Spirit upon our lives. As Luke 11 verse 13 says, If you, though you are imperfect, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? We ask for your Holy Spirit, Lord, to guide us, strengthen us, and lead us closer to you. God, right now we come before you asking for your Holy Spirit to fill us. Transform our prayer lives, Lord. Let us be people who walk closely with your Spirit, who are guided and comforted by him. Jesus, teach us how to pray in the Spirit, so our prayers rise to you like a sweet fragrance. Father, we admit that we need your Holy Spirit. Let him move powerfully in our lives. As we read your word, may the Holy Spirit bring clarity and understanding. Open our spiritual ears and eyes to see the priceless treasures in your word. Jesus, I ask that the Holy Spirit make scripture come alive to us, piercing through every doubt, every moment of skepticism, and every anxious thought. God, it's through the Holy Spirit that we can intercede for our families and homes with true power. He is the one who gives us strength to overcome any hidden spiritual battles. Lord, grant us discernment. Open our spiritual eyes to see and recognize the enemy's attacks so that we can stand strong, rebuke them, and overcome in the name of Jesus. Your word in Ephesians 5 verse 18 to 20 tells us, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to reckless living but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. 
always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Lord, fill us with your Spirit. Pour out your Spirit on us so powerfully that it brings revival within us, our families, and our communities that need you so much. Let that revival spread across our land. Father, don't let us be filled with anything that isn't from you. Keep us from envy, drunkenness, lust, or pride. Let us be filled only with your Holy Spirit. We don't want anything else, Lord, only you. Romans 8 verse 15 says, You did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Thank you, Abba Father, for not giving us a spirit of fear, but adopting us as your children through your spirit. Holy Spirit, we invite you to move freely in our lives. Speak to us, minister to our hearts, and guide us to repentance. Help us live righteously and seek holiness. Galatians 5 verse 16 to 17 reminds us, Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. Lord, give us the strength and grace to walk by the Spirit, not following the desires of the flesh. Holy Spirit, empower us, lead us and guide us, Father. We thank you for hearing our prayers. I believe by faith that you have heard this prayer, Father. Help us continue to long for your Holy Spirit, to receive him and to walk in step with him. Teach us to be led by your Spirit, not just in our prayers, but in every step of our daily lives. God, we are so thankful and we lift you high. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. We often take life for granted and overlook God's protection. But remember, you are most at risk when you're comfortable. The devil delights in a comfortable Christian, and God warns that a comfortable Christian is lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. It means you have no urgency, no fire in your prayers. I want to stress how vital prayer is. We need God to watch over us and shield us. Mark 14.38 says, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. When you are comfortable and without prayer, you are at your weakest as a believer. Let me tell you this. When you are prayerless, you become an open target for spiritual attacks. The forces of darkness work in the shadows, both spiritually and in the physical world. The devil is cunning and never fights fair. He will wait for the moment when your defences are down, when your spiritual senses are dulled by a lack of prayer. That's when he strikes. But today, I want to encourage you and remind you of the powerful protection we have in Jesus Christ. No matter what the enemy tries, we are guarded by Jesus, we are shielded by his presence, and the blood of Jesus creates a powerful barrier around our homes. The angel of the Lord camps around us when we call on his name. Do not fear what comes your way, because Jesus Christ is your mighty protector. He is your savior, and he will cover you and block the enemy's attacks. So, each day, hold on to this truth and stay in prayer. I urge you to pray for the divine protection that only the Son of God can give. This is the kind of protection that rebukes the enemy and uncovers his schemes, leaving no room for spiritual attacks. David, a man after God's own heart, said in Psalm 119 verse 62, at midnight I rise to praise you because of your righteous rules. Jesus declared in Matthew 16 verse 18, You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let this be a powerful declaration over your life. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Over your home, over your children, over your marriage, over your very life. These words are bold and direct, sending a clear message to the enemy that whatever plans he had are destroyed in Jesus' name. Every scheme and plot aimed at you is rendered powerless by the blood of Jesus Christ, by his word, and by your testimony. Do not be afraid, for Isaiah 54 verse 17 reminds us, No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. 
This is the heritage of the Lord's servants, and their righteousness is from him. Let this verse be a declaration over your life. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Let this truth sink into your heart and speak it over yourself. This verse is a reminder that Jesus is our protector. He turns what was meant for harm into good. He breaks every curse, silences every negative word, and charts a path for you. He even uses your enemies as stepping stones to elevate you. No weapon formed against you shall succeed. I say amen to that. I agree with this word, Lord. Saints, this promise should be etched in our hearts. Life without God can be frightening, and people can be hurtful whether you have God or not. But I want to lift you up and strengthen your faith. Do not fear. No weapon, whether in words, actions, or any form, will succeed against you. Trust that God's promises are true and meant for you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, the one with all power and authority, I bless your holy name and praise you the Alpha and Omega, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You have taken us from weakness and given us your promise in Luke 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Thank you for giving us such authority, Lord. We stand firm in the victory you have given us, through this authority we command the enemy to flee. Your word assures us that if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. He will flee from us, and so we don't just resist the enemy, we declare confusion in his plans and schemes. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, we destroy every plot of the devil. You, our precious Father, have not only given us authority over all the power of the enemy, but you have also promised that nothing shall ever harm us. Right now, with the authority of your word, I rebuke every plan of the enemy. I rebuke every demon from hell and everything that tries to disrupt or distract us from God's calling on our lives. Indeed, the gates of hell will not prevail. I stand on your word, which is true for our lives. As Deuteronomy 28 verse 7 declares, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They will come at you one way and flee before you seven ways. With you by my side, Lord, who can stand against me? You are the God who commands an uncountable number of angels, the Lord of hosts, the God who has never lost a battle. You are the creator of all things and all power belongs to you. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for your perfect sacrifice that gives us boldness in faith. We declare and decree that because we are sanctified and covered by the blood of Jesus, the kingdom of darkness has no power over our lives. I cancel every plan of the enemy in Jesus' name and declare that he has no hold over me. By the authority in the name of Jesus Christ, I say to the devil, you are defeated, you will not succeed. You will not prosper, for Jesus Christ has already defeated death, hell, and the grave. My Lord has put you to shame, devil, and has stripped you of any power over us and our families. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we walk in victory. Because he lives, we are overcomers. It is his strength, his grace, and his mercy that give me victory over the enemy. Lord Jesus, I praise you. I magnify your name and lift you high. I look to you, King Jesus. The battle is not mine. It is yours. I will call on your name at all times. When life is good, I will call on you, and even in my distress, I will seek you, Lord. I will call on the name of the Lord, the great I am. I trust you to deliver me from every trouble. I bless your name and glorify you for answering my prayers. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. In Luke 4, verse 17 to 19, it is written, The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to announce freedom for the captives and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. 
take note of what Jesus brings. He shares good news with the poor, leading us to salvation. He declares freedom for the captives, pardoning our sins and releasing us from guilt. He brings true and lasting freedom to those who are oppressed, breaking the chains of every unclean spirit. When Jesus enters your life, he fills it with peace. As Colossians 3 verse 15 says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Because of the great price Jesus paid on the cross, we don't have to work for our salvation or earn it. It's not something we save up for. We simply need to accept Jesus into our hearts. Only then can his peace rule over our minds. Jesus also brings love. 1 John 4 verse 16 tells us, So we have come to know and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. It was love that sent Jesus to the cross, and through that love, we have access to grace, mercy, and eternal life. If you have a personal relationship with Jesus, you have access to all these gifts, peace beyond understanding, freedom, and liberty. With Jesus, there is no more oppression or captivity, only salvation and freedom from sin. Be encouraged by Romans 8 verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Trials will come, and we will face battles we wish to avoid. Challenges will appear when we least expect them. Yet, we have a saviour in Jesus, a miracle-working God who makes a way when there seems to be none. Unlike us, God isn't confined by what's predictable or logical. We often measure success by our abilities, achievements and material status, thinking that only those who look impressive have a chance at victory. But God's power doesn't depend on human strength. Using only the strongest would be too predictable, taking away his glory. If God worked only through the strong, people might dismiss his presence and attribute success to human skill alone. But 1 Corinthians 1 verse 27 reminds us, God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God's ways aren't like ours. What we see as foolish, he uses to humble the wise. What we see as weak, he uses to overcome the strong. Your greatest challenge could be the very thing God uses to bring your biggest breakthrough and blessing. Think of Joseph. Betrayed by his own brothers, his worst experience became the path to his God-given destiny. Or the woman with the issue of blood, what seemed like her greatest defeat, an illness that took everything from her, became the reason she witnessed the miraculous healing power of Jesus. Our weaknesses can often be the very moments where we see God's power at work. God has promised us in his word that all things will work together for our good when we love him. This means that even the pain and disappointment you're feeling now will eventually work out for your benefit. It might not make sense to you in this moment, but take heart. Trust in the Lord to guide you. Trust him to lead you to places of peace, to green pastures and still waters. Trust that he will make a way when it seems impossible, because he is in control and your life is in his loving hands. Be encouraged, even if you can't see it yet. God is working things out for you. Now let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the author of everything good. Everything pure, everything righteous is from you. Lord Jesus, wherever you are, there is peace, there is joy, there is life. We invite you into our hearts and homes, for where your presence is, there is no captivity, no oppression, only freedom. Thank you, Father, for offering yourself to die for us out of love. We praise you, Lord, because all authority has been given to you. Whatever you say will come to pass. Whenever you enter our lives, blessings flow freely from you. You are the object of our affection, and you demand our attention and reverence. We bow down to you, for none can stand against your will. Lord Jesus, you are able to accomplish everything you set out to do. Your power and goodness are unquestionable. As Psalm 16 verse 1 says, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. 
Father, we invite your presence into our lives. Your presence is what our souls long for, what we need. For too long, the world has rejected you, putting its faith in things that have no value. But as your children, we stand on your word, which says in Ephesians 2, verse 19 to 21, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. We thank you for making us a part of your family and building us into your holy temple. Lord Jesus, you are the chief cornerstone of our lives, and we honor you with our worship and obedience. We invite you into our hearts, our homes and our minds. Bring restoration, peace and love to every part of us. Lord, push away every unclean thought and drive out every shadow of darkness with your brilliant light. Sweep through our lives in a mighty way. Cast out fear and break the patterns of negativity. At the sound of your voice, even demons tremble and flee because you hold all authority. Father, move into our homes. Bring peace and unity to our families. Heal every heart that is longing for love. Today, we need you, Lord Jesus. Your name holds power, and when you speak, chaos becomes order, darkness turns to light, evil is defeated, and righteousness reigns. In your presence, nothing unholy can remain. Lord, I pray that you would do a new thing in our lives. Even now, you are knocking at the door of our hearts. Help us to answer your call and open our hearts to you. May you show up in a powerful way and rule over every area of our lives. Whatever your will is, may we be ready and willing to serve you. Let your glory be known in our families and our communities. Awaken our spirits to the power of the Holy Spirit within us. Father, help us recognize your presence every day. May the Holy Spirit speak to us, minister to us, guide us and counsel us each moment. We bless your holy name and thank you for hearing this prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We all have different roles in the lives of the people around us. You may be a father or mother to someone, a brother or sister to another, a son or daughter to someone else. You could be an encourager, a confidant, a prayer partner. We wear many different hats playing all these vital roles in the lives of those we love. But for a moment, I want to shift our focus and speak about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our Savior. He is the Savior to the lost, the bread of life to those who hunger, and the fountain of living water to those who thirst. He is the chief cornerstone of every godly home, a strong foundation when the enemy tries to shake our lives. In Nahum 1 verse 7 it says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. David also said in Psalm 18 verse 2, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. In these times, with all the talk of artificial intelligence, future pandemics, and turmoil across the world, I want you to remember this truth. There is no one and nothing else that can ever replace our Lord. No one can make him irrelevant. Jesus Christ is still needed as a savior for the lost. He is still the protector, the provider, and the bridge over troubled waters. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father except through him. So I want to encourage you. Follow Jesus Christ, live for him, obey him, love him, and be committed to him. The Bible is clear. Jesus Christ died on a cross for your sins. He rose from the grave on the third day, and he ascended to heaven shortly after. The Bible also tells us that Jesus is alive today and seated at the right hand of God the Father. One day, he will return, and when he does, 
every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Despite all the breakthroughs in science and technology today, the Bible remains true when it tells us there is no other way to heaven except through Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, I want you to focus on one specific scripture from Philippians 3 verse 10. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. What does it mean to know the power of his resurrection? I believe that knowing the power of his resurrection means knowing that we serve a living God. We serve a God who is alive, alive in a way that death could not hold him and the grave could not contain him. Revelation 1 verse 17 to 18 tells us, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, but look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the grave. Jesus is the living one, and no other God on earth can claim this. There are many who worship idols and other gods, but none can say what our God says. He is alive forever. Jesus said, I am the living one. I died, but look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the grave. The amazing news I have for you today is that Jesus Christ is alive. He still answers prayers, he still heals, and he can perform miracles today. If you open your heart and believe in him, here is the promise we hold on to from John 3 verse 14 to 15. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. The Bible says that everyone who believes in Jesus Christ will have eternal life. My question for you today is simple. Do you believe? With this understanding, knowing that God's promises are true, let us approach his throne with a single-minded focus, with a heart full of determination and a praise on our lips. Lord Jesus, we come before you with hearts full of worship. Hebrews 13 verse 15 tells us to continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God and with grateful hearts we want to acknowledge and glorify your name always. You are the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the true vine. Apart from you we are nothing. You are the light of the world and without you there is no hope. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life, the only way to heaven and eternal life. God, we praise you because you are all-knowing. Your ways are higher than ours, and what is unknown to us is known to you. You know what tomorrow holds, and you know us from beginning to end. We need you, Father. You are Jehovah Elohim, our mighty creator. You alone can speak and create. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider, and Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. We are grateful, Lord, for healing not just of physical wounds, but emotional wounds too. You heal broken hearts, broken homes, and broken relationships. We need your peace, Lord. You are wise in all your ways, triumphant and mighty. As your children, we stand victorious through your word. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57 says, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 8 verse 37 declares, In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Jesus, you loved us so much that you died for our sins, and because of your precious sacrifice on the cross, we can say it is well. We have the victory because Jesus Christ has overcome. Sin has no hold on us, and death has no sting. In Jesus, we are more than conquerors. The spirit of fear, anxiety, restlessness and depression, these are all conquered in your name. The devil is conquered in the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 19 verse 7 to 9 tells us that the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. His statutes are trustworthy, making the simple wise. His precepts are right, giving joy to the heart. His commands are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Your word is perfect, Father. We thank you for it today. May your word refresh our souls every day, Lord. May it be a light to guide our steps, showing us clearly the way of the Lord, 
and separating us from the ways of the world. In Deuteronomy 6, verse 5 to 9, it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands I give you today. Repeat them to your children again and again. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. God, help us to realise how crucial your word is to our lives. Stir in us a deep yearning and hunger for your truth. May your word fill our homes and be spoken over and over again. I pray, Lord, that your word would impact us daily, transforming our character, our speech and our mindset. In this world filled with confusion and lies, we need your truth. We need you, God. Your word is the only thing that can clearly separate holiness from evil. In a world full of deception, help us to keep your word close so that every step we take is guided by you. Lord, you are our strong tower, our refuge, our protector. You are omnipotent and omnipresent, and nothing is too hard for you. Because of this, I will always keep my eyes on you, Lord Jesus. With you by my side, I will not be shaken. I will not be moved. I will not be overwhelmed by the worries of life. With you as my shepherd, I will not want. I will lack nothing. I will never be lost or abandoned, because you are the good shepherd. My future is in your hands, Lord, and my life is in your hands. I declare that surely your goodness, your mercy, and your unfailing love will follow me all the days of my life. Father, we bless your holy name and thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Nahum 1 verse 7 says, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him. Lord, you are my rock, my fortress, my savior. You are my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. I want to know you, Christ. Know the power of your resurrection, share in your sufferings, and become like you in your death. When I saw you, I fell at your feet as though I were dead. But you laid your right hand on me and said, don't be afraid, I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I died, but look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and the grave. Lord, let us continually offer our praise to you, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to your name. As it says in Deuteronomy 6 verse 5 to 9, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and strength. Commit yourselves to these commands, Repeat them to your children, talk about them always, and let them be reminders for you. May we live in the light of your word every day. Have mercy on me, O God. Have mercy on me, for my soul trusts in you. Under the shadow of your wings, I will take refuge until these troubles pass by. We often take life for granted, and even God's protection is something we overlook. But let me remind you, when you're comfortable, you are most vulnerable. The enemy loves a comfortable Christian, and God calls those who are comfortable lukewarm because they are neither hot nor cold. There's no fire in their prayers, no urgency in their hearts. But today, I want to emphasize the importance of prayer. We need God to watch over us and protect us. The Bible says in Mark 14 verse 38, Watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. When you are comfortable and prayerless, you are in your weakest state as a believer. And when you are prayerless, you are open to spiritual attacks. The forces of darkness operate in secrecy, both spiritually and physically. The devil is sneaky and doesn't play fair. He will wait until you've let your guard down, until you're dull in your spiritual senses because of a lack of prayer. That's when he strikes. But let me encourage you today. You are protected in Jesus Christ. No matter what the devil tries, you are shielded by Jesus Christ. His blood has formed a wall of protection around your home. 
the angel of the Lord encamps around you. When we call on God, he answers. Don't fear whatever comes your way, because Jesus Christ is your mighty protector. He is your savior, and he will cover you, blocking the enemy's attacks. Each day, pray for divine protection that only comes from the Son of God. This protection rebukes the enemy and exposes his plans. It takes away the power of spiritual attacks. David, a man after God's own heart, said in Psalm 119 verse 62, At midnight, I rise to give you thanks for your righteous laws. You may be feeling alone, as though life has knocked you down, but I want to remind you, you are defended by a God who never sleeps. You are guarded by the Lion of the tribe of Judah. You are shielded by the powerful blood of Jesus Christ. Let me read to you from Psalm 121, a short but powerful reminder that our help comes from the Lord. While others may turn to other sources of comfort, we have the privilege of calling on the name above all names, Jesus Christ. As I read this passage, I pray that the Spirit of the Lord strengthens your faith and brings peace to your heart, even in the midst of any chaos you may be facing. Psalm 121 says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. As Christians, we don't often speak enough about the protection we have as children of God. The Bible tells us the Lord is our keeper. We belong to Him, and we are under His care. It's amazing to think that such a powerful God would consider us so precious that He watches over us. As a child of God, you are surrounded by angels. When you call on the name of Jesus, He answers, Rest easy. Be at peace, knowing there is wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. The God who protects us is unconquerable. He is almighty. He knows us individually, he loves us perfectly. He provides for every need, and he most certainly protects us. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, I lift your name high, for you alone are worthy of praise and exaltation. Today I come to you asking for your help and intervention for everyone listening, those in need and in every situation we face. While many place their trust in doctors, scientists and human knowledge, we place our trust in you, King Jesus, we know that our help comes from you. You are everything we need and desire. Your word in Psalm 121 verse 3 to 4 says, He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. I thank you for this promise. You will never let us, your children, stumble. You will keep us steady, unshaken by the challenges life throws our way. Even when the enemy rises against us, your word promises that we will not be moved. I call on you, Jehovah, to hold us close. Place my hand in yours and guide me. Lead me with your strength and wisdom. You are our keeper, Father. You are so powerful and limitless. You never sleep nor slumber. In you, we are secure. We are safe and at peace, knowing that the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob watches over us and our families. You protect us by day and night, wrapping your loving arms around us. Thank you, Lord, for your constant protection, keeping us safe from sunup to sundown. We give you all the glory, Lord, for shielding us from the attacks of the enemy. You block every dart that comes our way. Some may trust in chariots, some in horses, but as for me and my house, as for everyone listening, we declare that we trust in the name of the Lord our God. I will trust in you, Jesus, because your word tells us in Psalm 20, verse 6, Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Today we confess victory over all of life's troubles. We speak of victory over every battle. In Christ we are winners, more than conquerors, 
because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. I bless your name, Father, for your promises. We confess by faith that you will keep us from all harm. Jehovah Jireh watches over our lives and preserves us from evil. I declare that evil will not touch us or come near our homes, because our Saviour is our protector. He preserves our going out and our coming in. May your name be glorified, Lord Jesus, from this day forth and forevermore. I pray that the words spoken here will be heard in heaven. Thank you for listening to this prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God sees you, dear listener. That's the message I want to share with you today. The eyes of the Lord are upon you. In Luke 13, verse 10 to 13, we witness a powerful moment between Jesus and a woman whose name we don't even know. Her being unnamed might suggest that she was of a low social standing in society. But what's most important is that, despite that, Jesus still saw her. He still took the time to notice her. The story tells us that one Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in a synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent over for 18 years and could not stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. Then he touched her, and instantly she could stand up straight. She praised God at that moment. Now think about this. This woman was bent over and unable to look up. She couldn't see the sky, the smiles of others, or even be embraced fully. I believe her condition is a symbol for anyone who may feel like they can't see their future. You might feel like no one cares or understands how you're doing. You might be longing for an embrace but feel alone. What touches me most in this passage isn't just that Jesus healed her or that he told her she was set free. It's the fact that Jesus saw her, God saw her, true love saw her, the King of Kings saw her. And that's the word I want you to hear today. Jesus sees you. You may feel so bent over in your mind, your spirit or your soul that you can't see the light, or you may feel like no one notices your pain. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus sees you. He sees the struggles, the loneliness, the rejection, and the overwhelming weight you carry. He sees it all. And just like with this woman, he doesn't just see you, he cares for you. He smiles at you, even when you feel unseen by others. You might feel bent over, unable to look up or forward to what's ahead. But all you need to know is this. Jesus sees you, right where you are. He sees the pain, the loneliness, the isolation, and he won't leave you there. He will touch you, just as he touched this woman, and cause you to stand tall in his love. In that moment, she stood straight, praising God. And I believe, just like her, Jesus will lift you up too. In his embrace, you will find the strength to face the future, knowing that everything is working for your good, that all things are in your favor. Psalm 37 verse 3 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. When we trust in the Lord, we can face whatever comes with the confidence that He is with us. Whatever the future holds, we face it with Jesus. Whatever opposition we face, we are protected by Jesus. Trusting God is a choice, a choice to believe that He is with us through it all. And in that trust, He will help us stand tall and be the person He has created us to be. So, know today, God sees you, and he is with you, lifting you up. Keep trusting in him. You'll have to walk with God without always knowing what's next. Faith, in its simplest form, is doing your part, which is trusting God to do his. Your part is to believe, that's all you need to do. Then you leave the rest to God. His word says that nothing is impossible for him. Let me ask you, are you doing your part? Are you standing on God's word? believing what he says. Faith isn't something you can touch or control. It's not something you can explain or plan out. 
Faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the proof of what we can't see. If you can see it, it's not faith. If you can explain it or control it, it's not faith. Too often, we try to control every detail of our lives, but then life throws things our way that we can't control. And that's when we realize the most important things in life are out of our hands. You can exercise and diet all you want, but disease might still show up. You can build the tallest skyscraper, but it's no match for the power of a tornado or earthquake. These things remind us that we aren't in control. But here's the beauty of it. It's when we feel out of control that faith shines. Faith lets us be okay with being out of control because we know God has a plan and he will have the final word. So as we approach God's throne of grace, let's ask him to take us to a place where we're okay with not knowing it all. Let's ask him to help us trust in him, not because we have all the answers, but because we know who the answer is. His name is Jesus. Let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus, for your word, which uplifts and encourages us. Lord, I pray for everyone listening right now. See us, Lord. Look upon our lives with mercy and love. For the person who needs your touch right now, may you see them, Lord. See their faith, see their heart, and see their need. You, Lord, see beyond the surface. You see into the depths of our souls, and I praise you for that. When you look at me, Jesus, you see all that troubles me, all that hurts me. You see my struggles and pain, and I'm so grateful for that. You, and only you, can make me whole. When you look upon me, my burdens are lifted, I'm healed, I'm set free. We declare the blessing from Numbers 6, verse 24 to 26 over our lives. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May this be our reality, that your face will shine upon us day and night, that your eyes will turn toward us and in your gaze will find peace. We want your gaze, Lord, because it's filled with love, compassion, and mercy. We run into your arms, Jesus, because in your embrace we stand tall. We rise in faith, bold and unafraid. Psalm 40 verse 2 says, He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. In your arms I rise. I stand in faith in boldness, no longer bent over by despair, but standing tall in the power of your love. I can say with confidence, I am healed. I stand in your strength, renouncing the power of the enemy. I stand full of boldness and conviction to testify of your goodness. Thank you, Jesus, that when I'm weary, I can come to you. You are gentle with my burdens. When life gets heavy, I find relief in you. Father, I've realized that the only way to live is in your embrace. Your love is unconditional and pure. And when I stand in it, I am free from worry, free from trying to fix everything on my own. I lay my burdens down before you. I no longer let my mind be clouded by earthly troubles. Your love covers all. Your love restores. Your love heals broken hearts. I praise you, King Jesus. I'll worship you forever because by faith I believe that you see me, you rescue me, and you'll never leave me. You will always be all I need. For this, I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Leave a like for this video and share it at least one time to help us reach more people. Spread the gospel and change more lives by comment using the word, Amen. To further support the dissemination of this message, consider sharing this video with a friend or family member. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and enable notifications to stay updated with more content that nourishes the soul and uplifts the spirit. See you at next video.